The tech world barely blinks when Apple releases its new iPhone SE series, but this time it was sort of different. The recently released iPhone 16e had the making of a typical SE series until you look under the hood. It became the first Apple smartphone to use an Apple design modem chipset, which completes the company's journey towards chipset independence. And for Apple, this is a double win having complete control of how its device chipset originates, giving it an edge in both the smartphone market and the smartphone chipset market. And for Qualcomm, it's an existential threat that potentially wipes out 22% of its revenue and then eliminates its advantage in the smartphone chipset market. And with what looks like a minor upgrade to an entry-level iPhone, Apple is about to transform from one of Qualcomm's most valuable customers to its most dangerous competitors. How did we get here? Apple and Qualcomm have what I describe as a rocky relationship, but they need each other at the end of the day. So when they have a problem, they work it out. And then they have a problem again and they work it out again. And then another problem and well, you get the drip. It's like one toxic relationship where they keep working out things and getting back together. But everyone knows deep down the relationship isn't going to work out in the long run. Qualcomm has an omnipresence in the smartphone market. Look anywhere in any smartphone market and you see Qualcomm. For instance, it makes Snapdragon, which is the SoC you will find in many of the best smartphones in the world. However, while the Snapdragon chip is pretty elite, there are other elite chips too. And you don't really have to use the Snapdragon chip if we're being honest. Some phones use MediaTek, which is Snapdragon's major rival in this niche, and smartphones or phones just create their own SoCs like the iPhones with the Bionic chips and the Pixels with the Tensor. But SoC is not the only chip that is needed to make a smartphone. You also need a modem chip, which is basically handles cellular communications in your smartphone. Qualcomm makes that too. In fact, they just don't make it. They have the patents that other companies need to make it as good as them, which is kind of crazy. It is hard to make a smartphone modem chip as good as Qualcomm and even harder to sell it as well as Qualcomm. Qualcomm's modem chips are not just fast and reliable, they are power efficient. For instance, Pixel phones use a custom design chip and they're a good example of how difficult it is to make a modem chipset that has the same level of quality as Qualcomm chips. Pixel's chips are also fast, but they are not reliable and power efficient as Qualcomm chips. Apple uses Qualcomm's modem chips in iPhones and iPads. It previously tried Intel chips in the iPhone 11, but they didn't really continue with Intel because they couldn't meet up with Apple's demand. So basically, Qualcomm makes the best smartphone modem chips and its patent licensing makes it difficult for other companies to compete with them. You see, Qualcomm's patent licensing is the major cause of the problem with Apple. In 2005, when Apple wanted to make its first smartphone or the first iPhone, it reached out or they reached out to Qualcomm and said, hey, we're working on this phone and we want you to supply the modem chips. And Qualcomm said, that's cool, but you have to first sign a patent licensing agreement before we consider doing this. Apple was shocked. They were like, who the hell do you think you are? Because the patent licensing agreement thing was kind of weird. But the weird part about all this, Apple thought, why don't you just charge more money instead of a patent license agreement? The weirder part was Qualcomm charges a 5% royalty on the phone and not just the chip. For every iPhone Apple sells, Qualcomm would get 5% of the amount, even though the chip it supplies costs around 20 bucks per phone. And Apple happens to sell a lot of iPhones at a pretty high price. Also remember, this royalty fee is different from the one-time sales fee that Apple will pay Qualcomm to supply these chips. Apple decided not to use Qualcomm and went with Infineon. I, I don't know if I'm butchering that name. It is a German company, but after the release of the iPhone 3G, Apple needed a chip that would allow the iPhone to be compatible with every form of connectivity, including CDMA. And that is something Infineon couldn't just do. So Apple went back to Qualcomm and because Qualcomm's chips were reliable and versatile, Apple kept using Qualcomm up to the iPhone 7 release when it decided to stop putting all its eggs in one basket. The iPhone 7, the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 10 had the Qualcomm and the Intel chips, while the iPhone 11 had just the Intel chips. 
Apple loved working with Intel and wanted to keep using Intel exclusively, but Intel didn't have the resources required to deliver at the level that Apple needed. And while working on the iPhone 12, Apple figured Intel might not be able to deliver a chip with 5G capability. 5G, 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 5G. And 5G was a necessity for Apple because Samsung had released a 5G phone and they needed to catch up. So they went back to Qualcomm and the Toxic X delivered. But Apple knew it and had to do something about about Qualcomm. The fee was ridiculous. Despite getting significant discounts from Qualcomm in the form of rebates, Apple still believed it was paying too much to Qualcomm, which is kind of true. Intel couldn't keep running its smartphone modem business because Apple was the backbone and no other brand could generate enough revenue to keep the business alive. And when Apple heard that Intel wanted to quit, they thought to themselves, well, I could use some of these patents that Intel has. So in 2019, Apple bought Intel's smartphone modem business for 1 billion USD and decided to compete with Qualcomm, its current suppliers. So six years later, Apple delivered its first modem chip with the C1. And before we get into what the C1 means for Apple and the Qualcomm relationship, let's quickly talk about their rivalry. Now, while Apple was relying on Qualcomm to deliver modem chips for the iPhones every year, it was also competing in Qualcomm in other niches in the semiconductor industry. Now, remember, besides the modem chips, there is the SoC, which is an integral part of a smartphone. And in this niche, Qualcomm has the Snapdragon chip while Apple has the Bionic chip and also known as the A-series silicon chip. Now, the biggest smartphone brand that uses the Snapdragon is Samsung. Samsung has used the Snapdragon chip in almost all versions of the Galaxy S-series smartphone it has made. Made. The Galaxy S6 was the last S series phone to exclusively use Exynos chip, and since then, Samsung has used a Snapdragon chip in at least the US market or the US version on all their S series phones. Qualcomm also supplies Snapdragon SoCs to other brands like the OnePlus, Motorola, Xiaomi, and several others. Apple has an advantage here because it doesn't have to rely on phone makers to use its chips since it both makes the chips and the phones, which, hit it or love it, is the world's most popular phone. Now, while Qualcomm has to rely on other phone makers to keep seeing the value of its chips, which is why Apple has been able to compete with Qualcomm in the smartphone chip markets, despite Qualcomm supplying to multiple phone brands in the world. Now, both companies also make chips for other products like smart TVs, smartwatches, foldable phones, and you know, your tablets. But one niche that shows how intense Apple and Qualcomm's rivalry is and will be in the future is the ARM CPU niche. Now, typically, Laptops are powered by the x86 based chips, which is a market dominated by Intel and AMD. But in 2020, Apple started a revolution when it left Intel again, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, and created the M1, an ARM-based chip that Apple thinks is the best means of powering your laptop. And MacBooks being a pretty popular laptop then led to that move creating an immediate effect, shrinking the x86 CPU market and creating a new market called the ARM CPU market. Apple dominates this market because the MacBook was the first popular PC brand to use ARM-based chips and others had to start playing catch-up. As at the end of 2022, Apple had a 90% share of the revenue generated in the ARM CPU market. But there is one company that has established itself as Apple's major competitor in this market. Guess, take a while, guess. It's Qualcomm. About 10% of Windows laptops being sold in the US are powered by Qualcomm's ARM-based chips. The Surface Laptop 7 was powered by Qualcomm's ARM-based chip, and that wasn't a bad laptop if I'm being honest. So this is an intense rivalry happening in multiple markets, and with the launch of the C1 chip, you can now add the modem chip market to the list of rivalry between Apple and Qualcomm. Qualcomm has certain advantages in the semiconductor market. One is that it operates there primarily, so it has the time the resources and the talents needed to keep innovating. It is a top 10 company in the general semiconductor industry, while Apple's semiconductor operation is not even top 10. Now in the modem chip market, it has over 100,000 active patents around CDMA, LTE, 5G, Wi-Fi, you name it. Even major competitors like MediaTek sometimes need some of Qualcomm's patents to create a chip that will compete with Qualcomm's chips, which is kind of crazy. So Qualcomm generates revenue from making
making chips and licensing patents. Apple, on the other hand, hasn't operated in the semiconductor industry for a long time. And in the modem chip market, it is mostly relying on limited Intel patents and resources to compete with Qualcomm. But Apple has the money and they have the research. And remember, it has an advantage that Qualcomm doesn't have. It makes both the chips and the phones. Early tests showed that the C1 chip on the 16E compares well with the Snapdragon X71 chip on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. But Snapdragon has three chips better than the X71. They have the X72 chip and they have the X75 chip on the S25 Ultra. And the X85 chip that was just released about two weeks ago. Now the modem chip market is a fast paced and dynamic industry. Today's trend might be tomorrow's obsolescence and before Apple figures it out, there might already be a new trend. Trend. The C1 chip was Apple's way of showing it can create a standardized chip. It does not plan to use this chip in premium iPhones yet. Apple and Qualcomm still have that deal that would allow the iPhones use Qualcomm's modem chips until 2026. By 2027, Apple wants to be completely free from Qualcomm. And when that happens, Qualcomm might lose about 20% of its revenue because they make a lot of money from Apple. But Qualcomm is already preparing for life without Apple. In the meantime, Qualcomm will be hoping that Apple is unable to create a chip nearly as good as its own or that Apple lags behind when the 6G becomes a thing. And then they have to come back to Qualcomm on their knees like that toxic X. Apple, on the other hand, will be hoping for success and not have to go back to Qualcomm Welcome ever again because that royalty fee is very high. In the end, I hope we as the consumers win because when there's rivalry, there is innovation. What do you think is the next chapter in the Apple and the Qualcomm rivalry? Let me know down in the comments. Please share this video and like this video because this is my second video essay ever. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. You know, go in depth on certain brands, certain products and just sets and services. So let me know if you guys like this kind of deep dives. I have more that are coming. Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is KJ and I will catch you guys in the next one.